join me in prayer. We thank you, Jesus, for giving us, giving us a new commandment, which probably was not very new, yet it is a new commandment because it is a new day, and it's a new invitation every time we encounter you to love one another, not the way we think people should be loved, but the way you love us. So may this morning, inspired by your Holy Spirit, all of us, may we open our hearts to try your new ways so that we can find new ways to love people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I know that by now you might be a little bit tired that I keep talking about the baby, but let me just say something. Um, after the wonderful uh, baby shower, uh, we got a lot of wonderful books that we're going to be very excited to be reading for the baby. And um, a lot of different names, a lot of different titles, a lot of different things. And so in particular, uh, Michelle and I, um, we were thankful for the books. And among the many authors, that uh, different authors that we receive as gifts uh, this time, uh, uh, Dr. Seuss was one of them. And uh, you already know that uh, how important uh, Dr. Seuss has been for many of us as we were growing up, uh, for the many different um, books and stories that he wrote that uh, at least personally um, had a very um, impactful uh, meaning and opportunity to see the world in a different way. And as I uh, get older and as I look at life in different ways, um, there are many other different authors that have allowed my imagination to be expanded and to be uh, taken into places that I never thought could be possible. I can think of um, you know, Tolkien, I can think of C.S. Lewis, I can think of uh, J.K. Rowling, I can think of many different people. Yet, I think uh, Dr. Seuss, for some reason, keeps coming to the top of all of them for maybe the simplicity, yet uh, the, how profound uh, the parables and the stories that uh, he was able to create, not just for the adults, but also for, no, not just for the children, but also for the adults. Uh, messages that I think uh, they never go away and we need to keep being reminded of. Um, it was because of that uh, and because we're in the summer and a summer is a time where you may want to start thinking of fun things to do. Um, I decided that this might be a good opportunity to explore some of those stories by Dr. Seuss and see how those uh, stories, how those parables can in some way still speak to us as adults and maybe invite us to reflect further, not just from the perspective of Dr. Seuss, but also from the perspective of who we are as Christians. I don't know how much you know about Dr. Seuss, but I can tell you that uh, he had a very interesting life as a human being. Um, his full name was uh, Theodore Seuss Geisel, or Giesel, and he was born March 2nd, 1904, in Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, as a young man, he joined the army and uh, he became a major during World War II. As he was uh, doing that military career, he also was exploring his talents as a cartoonist, uh, initially doing political cartoons, and eventually um, he decided to do books uh, illustrations, write books for children. Um, Dr. Seuss never had children. He never had children. And when he was asked once uh, about having children, uh, he told the reporter, you keep having kids, kids and I'll keep writing books. You know, I don't know that he was interested in having children. And so, for the next few weeks, we're going to be exploring some of those stories that I think you might be familiar with or not. 
Um, but I think that again, they can be very meaningful to us to hear and understand. And today we wanna to begin that exploration with, um, with one of my favorite uh, books by Dr. Seuss, which is Green Eggs and Ham. Although I talked about red beets, you know, it was green egg and ham. According to, the last time I saw, according to Amazon, um, the book Green Eggs and Ham is Dr. Seuss' second best seller. Number one is The Cat in the Hat. And um, the story and the conception of the book is very interesting. According to the story, um, Bennett Cerf, who was Dr. Seuss' editor, challenged him to write a book using 50 words or less. He then bet him $50. I'll give you $50 if you write a book with 50 words or less. When he wrote The Cat and the Hat, he, he used 225 words. So Dr. Seuss did them back down from the challenge, and that's how he was able to write Green Eggs and Ham, with exactly 50 different words, collecting the $50 from his editor. Now, 49 of the words are one-syllable words. Only anywhere extends into a multi-syllable range. Pretty remarkable when you look at the story, how it all makes sense. Dr. Seuss not only won the challenge with his editor, but in the process, he gave birth to this amazing story that is a favorite of children and adults like me. And you know that when uh, Dr. Seuss was writing, he was always hoping to share a message beyond just the entertainment for children. The story is about the main character, Sam I Am, who was pressing the other character to, to try something new. Sam I Am was inviting his friend to try green eggs and ham, which is an important lesson for children, exactly, especially when they don't wanna eat vegetables or riding a bike, they're afraid, or maybe lear learning new manners, many things. Children get afraid, but in the wisdom of Dr. Seuss, the challenge to be open and explore new things is not limited to children, because we as adults are many times reluctant to try new ideas, to be open to new possibilities. This doesn't stop with not wanting to try vegetables that may look funny to you before you even try them. And I believe that Dr. Seuss today is still onto something that we still may need to hear. So out of curiosity, I just wanna ask you, who doesn't like new things here? Who would like a new car or a new house, a new phone, a new husband? A new set of children, <laughs> new siblings, a new opportunity, a new job. And while some of those things might be, they might be easy to say yes, there are other things that we are not that open to try. A new way to get to work, a new sitting in the church, a new space where you sit on Sunday mornings. Um, there are things that we are afraid to try. There are new things that sometimes we'd rather stay with what we know than exploring a new and different way. If it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? The reality though is that many times when we are afraid of trying new things, we not only are closing ourselves off from exploring new opportunities and new experiences, but sometimes not trying a new thing may keep us from really knowing the full truth about life. And that's really where things get a little bit more complicated for adults, not just for children. And as we go back really to, to the life of Jesus and the, what we read in the Gospels about who Jesus was, you may realize that for the poor disciples who were walking with Jesus and learning from Jesus every day, literally, was everything was new. Exploring a new way, exploring a new opportunity, having a new conversation, meeting new people, 
exploring new ways of loving other people. In other words, just to use the words of Dr. Seuss, every day they have to eat a big full plate of green eggs and ham. And the question was always, will they try it or will they go back and hold back and not go with what Jesus is inviting them to try, even though in Jesus' case it was always good for them. If you look back to the course of the entire ministry of Jesus, we will see that in most everything he did, Jesus was breaking barriers. Jesus was opening new spaces for new people. From his first miracle to the last, in every aspect of life, Jesus was hoping that his disciples, and by extension all of us, we will be open to new things. So today we find ourselves in the gospel story in the midst of Jesus saying goodbye to his disciples. This is a very important moment. This might be, this is actually the last time when Jesus is going to have a face-to-face -face conversation with the disciples. He still has a lot of things that he wants to make sure the disciples get to hear new things. Now, a few verse, verses before this final conversation with the disciples, we see um, Jesus beginning the conversation in a kind of strange way. Jesus begins this conversation by taking, taking on the servant's role and decides to wash the feet of the disciples. This completely unexpected act of love took by surprise the disciples and Peter, Peter's first reaction to this action by Jesus was immediately to say, no, don't do this. And just like the character Sam I Am, who pesters throughout the entire book, the other character to eat a dish of green eggs and ham, he refuses, Peter refuses and responds, I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. But Jesus, being Sam I am, is persistent. Persistent until finally, Peter agrees. And he happily responds to Jesus, I do so like green eggs and ham. Thank you, thank you, Sam, I am. Jesus said to the disciples, I'm giving you a new commandment. Love one another. Love one another in the same way I love you. I'm calling you and inviting you to love one another. This is how everyone will know and recognize that you are my disciples when they see the love you have for each other. It is a very simple statement. And just like a book written with just 50 words, Jesus' words challenge us to the core because being a follower of Jesus means loving others like Jesus has loved, has loved us. But this will require indeed a new way of thinking about other people and about life. It will require a new way of extending love and hospitality to those who are not familiar with anything that has to do with the Christian faith and with St. Matthew's. It will require trying new things, new ways to share the same unchanging love of Jesus. I personally think that one of the greatest gifts that Dr. Seuss gave us in his books was not just the gift of beautiful illustrations and sentences that were amazingly beautiful in rhyming. But I believe that his greatest gift that he gave us was that he took stories, he didn't just tell stories, but he took stories and opened our imagination to see life in a different way. He may have taken uh, a dar dark and sad world and gave us a world filled with hope and imagination and possibilities. Because in some ways, although Dr. Seuss never proclaimed necessarily to have a faith, 
We can see that the gift of Jesus and imagination to create new things and to see new things was there as Dr. Seuss was writing these books. In recent years, in fact, neuroscientists have discovered that our capability to imagine things, to visualize things in our minds and in our brains can allow people to rehabilitate their motor skills and get better faster. People who can see themselves, for example, musicians playing and rehearsing in their heads have a better chance to be better musicians. And people with disabilities can also get better as they imagine themselves doing the things that their body is having a hard time doing. Because the gift of imagination is a gift that Jesus has given us to all of us as individuals and as a church to keep reimagining new ways for us to share the same and unchanging love of God in this time and age. The question is, are we going to allow Jesus' imagination transform the way we love each other, the way we express that love for each other? Jesus' new commandment to show love came in the midst of a very uncomfortable moment for the disciples. You see, he wanted to wash their feet. At one of my churches, I suggested for Holy Week that we should wash each other's feet. I almost was run out of the church for that suggestion. Pastor, you will never touch my feet. Pastor, you will never see my feet. Pastor, that will be the last thing that you will do in this church if you touch my feet. Because for all the reasons that you may have, your nails, your calluses, the smell, whatever you want to say, I have a theory. My theory is that our feet represent how we put our decisions into action. Our feet represent the way we express our will. If we decide to do something, we walk. If we decide to not do something, we go backwards. Our feet are the ones who move us into places. And so I wonder if when the disciples had this experience of obviously touching something very uncomfortable as their feet, they were, re they were kind of concerned that what Jesus was trying to do is controlling or inviting them to give their will, not control, to give their will to Jesus. And I wonder if today, this morning, the reason why we might be afraid of trying new things like Jesus washing our feet, is because we are afraid of giving our will entirely to Jesus. Because, although they may look like green eggs and ham, that we may not like, they might be good for us. So this morning, we're sitting here at church and we're about to have communion. And what God is telling us is, I want to do a new thing. In fact, I'm doing a new thing. It's springing up. Do you not see it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I really hope that today we will take to heart the fact not only that I'm going to be eating beets this week, but that we all take to heart this opportunity to be open and to try new things. To do not use those famous, is it three or four words? We've never done it. What is it? Seven? We have never done it that way before. Thank you, Kathy. I really hope that we will be open to the Spirit so that together this new commandment that Jesus has given us will not 
stay within these four walls, but it will go everywhere. Amen.